Hi everyone, in today's lesson we're going to talk about a concept called the chain rule. And the chain rule works for what we call composite functions. So first, definition. A composite function is a function made of other functions where the output of one is the input of the other. So normally you would have f of x, but I have f of g of x. So that's what I'm talking about in this definition. g of x is a y value, so that's your output that's being in the input of f. So you probably understand this from uh, pre-calc where whatever's inside the parenthesis you do first and then you apply F to it. So in these three problems here, I have three composite functions. And I want you to tell me which one is your G of X, your inside function, and which one's your F of X, your outside function. So let's take a look at the first one. G of X, the inside function, the thing that's inside here is 3X. And the outside function, we'll call f of x, is simply tangent of x. It just so happens that x is now 3x, right? So those are your two functions. Same thing for number two. Your g of x is the thing inside. So the thing inside is this e to the x. And your f of x, what you are applying to it, is this outside radical. So the square root of x. Now, in example number three, you should be noticing there's a lot of things going on here. There's an ln, a radical, and a 3x minus 5. So my inside function, g of x, is 3x minus 5. But then I still can't apply ln to it because I have a radical. So really there's another function here. So we could call this h of x is the square root of x. You would do that next. And then f of x, the outside, the true outside function is your ln. So ln of x would be on the outside. Okay, so how does this apply to derivatives? So there's a formula for derivatives of composite functions. So when I'm asked to find the derivative of this composite function, the rule says you take the derivative with the composite and then you multiply it by the derivative of the inside function. So this is the derivative of the inside function. And this is the derivative of the outside function. So we're always taking the derivative of the outside function times the derivative of the inside function. So the chain rule works like this. We have f of x equals this function. I need to take the derivative of the outside function and then the derivative of the inside function. So, for example, if I had f of x is equal to x to the fourth, everybody would be able to tell me that the derivative is 4x to the third using the power rule. So I want you to treat this stuff that's on the inside the same thing as if it were an x. So think of it as x to the fourth. What's the derivative of x to the fourth? you would say 4x to the third. It just so happens that your x is this x squared minus 5. So what you just did was you took the derivative of the outside function, this whole thing, but now we have to multiply this by the derivative of the inside. So what's the derivative of this inside function, x squared minus 5? Well, the power rule tells us that the derivative of x squared is 2x, and the derivative of 5 is a constant, so it's 0. That is my derivative. Okay, let's take a look at another example. So example number 2. We have f of x equals the square root of 4x minus 3. Again, you can think of this as simply the square root of x, which we know as x to the 1 half. When you take the derivative, it's a power rule. Take the 1 half, bring it in front, keep the base, and decrease the power by 1. It just so happens that your base is this 4x minus 3. So the 4x minus 3 stays. So we're doing the same exact thing. My derivative, f prime of x. First thing I probably would have done with this original is rewrite it as 4x minus 3 to the 1 half power. So when I take my derivative, I treat it just like this one. Bring the 1 half in front keep the base, so keep the 4x minus 3, decrease the power by 1, 
and then we always multiply by the derivative of the inside. This inside function is 4x minus 3, and the derivative of 4x is just 4. Derivative of a constant is 0, so just 4. So notice each of these red pieces are the derivatives of the inside. All right, let's try another one. So ln of x, so we're treating this as if it was just f of x equals ln of x. We know the derivative of ln of x is 1 over x. So what we're going to say now is f prime of x is the same thing, except instead of x, we're going to write x to the third. So it's 1 over x to the third. Now we always multiply by the derivative of the inside, right? That's always my next piece. So the inside is x to the third. Power rule quickly tells us that that is 3x squared. Now I'm sure some of you are noticing that we could simplify these. For simplicity and purposes of time, we're not going to simplify them now. Um, but you can if you want to. All right, last one is my e to the x function. We know the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. So the same thing applies here. The derivative of e to any power is that same thing. But now the chain rule tells us we're going to multiply by the derivative of the inside. So the inside function just happens to be this power here. So the derivative of the power, well, the derivative of 5x squared by the uh, power rule is 10x. And the derivative of negative 9x is simply negative 9. And that's it. That's how the chain rule works. Now, obviously, these problems can get a little bit harder. So we're going to try a couple more. So let's look at example number 5. So the derivative of sine. Um, so we know the derivative of sine. I'm just going to put these on top. Sine, cos, negative sine, negative cos. So we know the derivative of sine, this guy, is cos. So we're literally doing the same thing. You take the derivative of sine, so f prime of x, is cos. Of all of this original stuff, then it's always times the derivative of the inside. Well, the derivative of x to the third with a power rule is 3x squared. And the derivative of negative 1x, or negative x, is negative 1. That's it. All right, number six is a bit tricky because the derivative of tangent we know is secant squared. So we first have to rewrite this one. So I'm going to put a little star. We have to understand that tangent to any power, 4x, 4 here rather, tangent to the fourth of 5x means tangent of 5x, this whole thing, to the fourth power. So you can't just say the derivative of tangent is secant squared and make this a secant to the fourth. You must, must, must rewrite this. So then when you see this, you should see that it's a power rule. It's something to the fourth power. So my derivative, f prime of x, is take the 4, bring it in front, keep the base or keep the tangent of 5x, decrease the power by 1, and then always take the derivative of the inside. So we decrease the power by 1 and the derivative now of the inside, right? The derivative of this tangent of 5x, we know the derivative of tangent is secant squared. So secant squared of 5x. But technically, when I'm taking the derivative of tan 5x, like we did over here, it's a double chain rule. Because this one, the derivative of sine was cosine, then times the derivative of the inside. So when I'm taking the derivative of tan 5x, it's secant squared 5x times 5. So this one's a double chain rule. So what I would love for us to do now, I've kind of taught everything that there needs to know about the chain rule. I'd like for you to try to apply it. So I'm going to leave you guys with 7, 8, and 9 for homework. And we will start by going over these in class uh, when you come in. But I want to start you off a little bit. Question 7 looks like we're taking one function and multiplying it by the other. 
So in order to find this derivative, you need to use the product rule. And then you'll have to use the chain as well. Now this one, we have something raised to the third power. That's a power rule. We take the three, bring it in front, decrease the power. But when you take the derivative of the inside, you should see that it's a quotient rule. So just try them. I'm not asking for them to be perfect. I'm just asking for you to try. Um, and then the last one is, can we apply this? Can we write the equation of a tangent line at a certain value at x equals pi over 6? So you're trying these three. You're doing your best. And we'll start class by going over those tomorrow. All right. Have a good night.